This video will cover some review concepts from general chemistry that we'll need when we start to discuss organic chemistry. Because the majority of this is review, I'll move quickly, but please see me if you have any other questions. We'll start with the structure of an atom. Remember that an atom is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons are positively charged, neutrons are neutral, and electrons are negatively charged. An atom kind of looks like a big circle, which is the electron cloud, surrounding the smaller, denser nucleus, which contains the protons and neutrons. Right, so these are positively charged, the electron cloud is negatively charged. We're going to focus our um, semester on uh, the electrons. We're going to focus on the electrons because these are responsible for chemical bond formation. Remember that electrons are small and light, therefore they have properties of particles and waves. So remember that when we talk about bonding, we're interested in what are called the valence electrons. The valence electrons are the electrons in the outermost shell. So for example, carbon has four valence electrons. And you'll notice if you look at the periodic table, the number of valence electrons corresponds to the column number or group number. So for example, carbon is in 4A and has 4 valence electrons. Nitrogen is in column 5 and has 5 valence electrons. Oxygen is in column 6, has 6 valence electrons, etc. So when we draw the structure of these atoms, we symbolize the valence electrons by a dot. So for example, carbon has four valence electrons. So if we draw the atom of carbon, it will have four dots to represent the four valence electrons. Hydrogen has one. When we draw the hydrogen atom, it has a single dot to indicate that single valence electron. And this is useful when we look at bonding. A bond occurs when atoms transfer or share electrons. And when forming bonds, atoms will try to follow what's called the octet rule. The octet rule states that atoms will try to attain a filled electron valence shell. It's called the octet rule because the row 2 elements, which include carbon, will try to attain a complete valence shell, which is 8 electrons. And that's an octet. This includes carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen. Uh, row 1 elements, which is mainly hydrogen, will try to attain a filled shell, which is 2 electrons. And these atoms will try to attain a filled shell either by sharing electrons with another atom or by taking electrons through transferring from another atom. Another way of thinking about the octet rule is that these atoms are trying to attain a noble gas configuration. So, for example, if we look at carbon, if carbon gains four electrons, it will have the configuration of neon, which is a noble gas, right? These are the noble gases. And so, for example, atoms can do this either through transfer electrons, which is called ionic bonding. An example of ionic bonding uh, is the bonding between lithium. So lithium is in the first row, it has a single valence electron. And fluorine, fluorine is in group seven, so it has seven valence electrons. And an ionic bond, again, includes a transfer of electrons. So lithium can transfer this single electron to fluorine. And what that gives us is a lithium that has uh, an empty valence shell, giving it the configuration of helium. And fluorine, which has now eight valence electrons, giving it the configuration of neon. <clears throat> and so this ionic bond forms between lithium and fluoride because of the opposite charges, and this is very common in inorganic compounds. Much more common in organic chemistry is covalent bonding. Covalent bonding is electron sharing, and a good example of this is the bond that can form between two hydrogen atoms. Hydrogen is in, again, the first row, so it has a single valence electron. 
they can combine together two hydrogen atoms. They share, each share one electron. And what that gives us is hydrogen molecule of H2. And what that gives us is two hydrogens, each with, through sharing, the electron configuration again of helium, because they each have now two valence electrons. And this is the type of bonding that is most common in organic compounds. In Lewis structures, which is what we'll use in this class, covalent bonds are more commonly drawn as dashes, and non-bonding electrons, or lone pairs, are represented by two dots. So, for example, methanol Methanol has several covalent bonds between hydrogen and carbon, carbon and oxygen, and oxygen and hydrogen, and these are all shown as lines, and each of those lines, those dashes, indicate two electrons that are being shared between those two atoms. The non-bonding electrons, which are only found on oxygen in this particular structure, are shown by a pair of dots. These are non-bonding, or lone pair electrons. You should always, particularly when you're first learning to draw these structures, show all of your lone pairs. So make an effort to show these lone pairs, otherwise uh, you may forget that they're there. In organic chemistry, we sometimes have more than one pair of electrons shared between two atoms, and these are called multiple bonds. So if we have a single bond, this is one pair of shared electrons. going to look like a single dash, and that's what we see in, uh, for example, the structure of ethane. And ethane has a lot of single bonds. If we have double bonds, we have two pairs of shared electrons. And that's going to be represented by two dashes between the atom. For example, in ethene, right, that's a double bond. And the highest that we'll see in organic chemistry is a triple bond, which is three pairs of shared electrons. And we can see that in ethene, where there are three pairs of shared electrons between the two carbon atoms. Next, we're going to discuss something called bond polarity. And bond polarity is uh, kind of a measure of how equally the electrons are shared in a covalent bond. And so there are basically two types of, of covalent bonds. There are nonpolar covalent bonds. And in nonpolar, nonpolar covalent bonds, the bonding electrons are shared equally between atoms. And this most typically happens when the two atoms uh, that are sharing these electrons are the same. So for example, if we have a bond between two hydrogen atoms or between two carbon atoms, uh, the electrons that are shared between them are shared equally. Both of the atoms pull on those electrons with the same strength and they each own the same amount of those electrons. The other type of bond, covalent bond is a polar covalent bond. And in a polar covalent bond, the electrons are shared unequally. And this occurs when the bond is between two different elements. So for example, a bond between carbon and oxygen, or a bond between carbon and chlorine. The bonding electrons in these cases are not shared equally between the carbon and the oxygen, or the carbon and the chlorine. The bonding electrons are attracted more strongly to one of the atoms in the bond than the other atom. And we can actually predict this by using a trait of atoms called electronegativity. Electronegativity describes how strongly uh, an atom pulls on or wants electrons. And uh, we can predict electronegativity by looking at the table, because we know that electronegativity increases as we go across the table. So for example, fluorine is more electronegative than oxygen.
and electronegativity also increases as we go up the table. So for example, um, fluorine, again, is more electronegative than bromine. The final thing we're going to discuss in this video is formal charge. Formal charge is the counting. Uh, it provides a method for us to keep track of electrons when reactions are happening, when bonds are forming or breaking. Remember that the formal charge doesn't necessarily correspond to the real charges. It's literally just a counting. But if a Lewis structure does show formal charge on an atom, that atom bears at least part of that charge, uh, a partial charge. We'll talk about that more later. The way that we calculate formal charge is we count up all of the valence electrons for an atom, and we subtract all of the non-bonding electrons, or unshared electrons, and we also subtract half of the bonding electrons, or the shared electrons. And remember that the valence electrons are equal to the group number. And we can tell the non-bonding and the bonding electrons from the Lewis structure. The non-bonding are going to be the lone pairs, the two dots, and the bonding electrons are going to be the dashes. So let's look at an example. We will calculate the formal charge of oxygen in the hydroxide ion. So first we need to start with a Lewis structure of the hydroxide ion. And the formal charge of oxygen in this structure will be equal to the valence electrons of oxygen, which is 6, minus the non-bonding electrons, which are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, minus half of the bonding electrons. In this case, there are two bonding electrons that make up the single bond. So one half of two is one. So our formal charge of oxygen is six minus six minus one, or minus one. And so our Lewis structure is not complete until we add that charge to our Lewis structure. And just for practice, let's calculate the formal charge of hydrogen. Hydrogen comes with one valence electron. It has no non-bonding electrons and it has two bonding electrons, so one-half times two is one, so the formal charge of hydrogen is zero. So we don't put that on the Lewis structure. It's neutral. You can check your work because the hydroxide ion, right, it's an ion with a charge of negative one. And so the formal charges on all of the atoms within that ion should uh, sum up to give you the overall charge of the ion. And in this case, we have a negative one charge on oxygen, and that sums to give us a negative one on the entire atoms. We can check our work in that way.